angel came to see Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're gonna have, what? I can't, I can't say good. Mary, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager and I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms. Literally, no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem and that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, then they saw angels. The angel said, a new baby is getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel were singing. Glorious. And then the shepherds said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes. Maybe have to camp out a night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and some wipes, and some milk, some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's gonna be our best friend. I love you and you the best baby I ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is gonna change the world. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is probably the most well-known person in the Christmas story. Of course, other than Jesus. Today we wrap up our Christmas series we've entitled Family Tree as we look at the last and final of the five unlikely women in Jesus' lineage. Mary represents the end of a line of what has often been filled with messy stories and ugly circumstances. And yet it's here where Mary ends Jesus' genealogy and Jesus' earthly story begins. As I was rereading the Christmas narrative, I realized that Mary's story began with a yes. Yes is a small but powerful word. In fact, if you think about it, our yes and our no can have huge implications in our lives. One of the most significant yeses in my life happened one cold January day when I proposed to the woman that I was pursuing since sixth grade. Nine years and four months from the time that we met, I made a bold decision. I got down on one knee, I looked her in the eyes, and I asked her to marry me. And do you know what she said? She said yes. And that yes changed both of our lives. Yes can have major implications in our lives, can it? In fact, some of you are feeling the effects of that right now as maybe you said yes to hosting the Christmas family this year and right about now you're wondering, what in the world was I thinking? 
Maybe some of you uh, said yes to that Christmas sweater, and the truth is you probably should have said no. Some of you said yes to bringing your girlfriend or boyfriend home to meet the family, and you're feeling the pressure of that decision right now. See, yes is a powerful word, and we see it in the Christmas story. The truth is, without that yes, we might not have Christmas. Notice what the Apostle Luke writes in the first chapter of his gospel account, beginning in verse 26. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Mary's story started with an angelic proclamation of God's mission for her life. She was to bring forth the Redeemer and Rescuer of the world, and his name would be called Jesus. I don't know what I would have done if an angel manifested itself before me, and we're not really sure how Mary responded, other than the fact that Luke records that she was greatly troubled. But I'm sure that after the reality of everything that was going on set in, she probably wondered how in the world a girl from a backwood village named Nazareth would be responsible for such a task as what she was asked to do. Of course, there was the issue that she had never been with a man, and yet somehow she's going to bear a child. But after she come to understand that there would be an immaculate conception, notice what she says in verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mary said yes. She said yes to whatever God wanted for her life, no matter what it would cost her. But I wonder if she really knew what she was saying yes to. I mean, I I wonder if she would have said yes, if she understood the implications of that decision. I guess it doesn't matter because either way, she said yes. And because of that, Mary had to deal with three tensions in her life. The first tension was the pressure of saying yes. I think every mom knows and feels the pressure of bearing the title of mom. It's the pressure of caring for, nurturing, and protecting the innocent young ones that God has entrusted you with. It's hard enough to raise your own kids, right? But but imagine raising the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. After all, he would be perfect. Mary wasn't. He would never do anything wrong, and Mary would blow it time and time again. I mean, can you imagine the pressure of caring for and raising the Son of God? But Mary dealt with the pressure of her yes. But she also dealt with the persecution of her yes. I mean, what did she tell her friends as it became evident that her body was changing and day by day she was looking more and more pregnant? How would they react when she told them the baby she was carrying was not Joseph's? How would people respond when she was when she told them that she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit and the child she carried was the Son of God? I mean, you've got to know that she was met with an awful lot of skepticism with the people who she encountered. People who thought, yeah, right, Mary, like God got you pregnant, like that happens. Or or maybe uh, when she faced people later who would say, Mary, look, we get it. You and Joseph made a mistake. You got together a little too soon. Why don't you just fess up to it? Or what about the people that thought that she had cheated on Joseph and was carrying another man's baby? I mean, imagine the results and the rumors that she dealt with because of her yes. But there was a third tension that she dealt with that was far worse than the first two combined. It was the pain of her yes. You see, this child that she bore and cared for and protected and raised eventually grew up to become a man that she watched hang on a cross to die for the sins of the world, for your sins and mine. Now, I'm not a parent, but listen, I wouldn't fault any of you who are parents 
to not let your child to grow up to die for somebody else that you didn't know or certainly someone who really didn't care for you or your child. You see, the pain of saying yes to God's mission and calling on her life was, was extreme. Mary's yes brought great pressure and persecution and pain into her life. And so as we examine Mary's story, I think it gives us an indication of what it is that God wants from us this Christmas. He's waiting and looking for our yes. That simple three-letter word that says, God, I will go or do or say whatever it is that you want of me. He wants our yes to be yes, no matter what we're going through or no matter what he would ask us to go through. I realize that most of you have already said yes to God. You, you put your faith and trust in him. He's your savior. He's rescued you from your sins. You recognize what Jesus has accomplished on the cross for you and you, you understand what it is that we celebrate at Christmas. My question to you today is simply this. Where do you need to unconditionally say yes to God? What areas in your life have you stiffed arm God and kept him at bay? See, we all know what God wants of us, but maybe you've only given him parts of you. Where are you saying no to God right now? Mary's yes had no conditions. She didn't barter with God and say that she would agree to bring Jesus into the world if, she, if God made things easy for her. In fact, she didn't try to barter with God and say, I'll do what you want, God, if you promise to a set of negotiated blessings that you'll bring into my life. No, see, for Mary, she simply said yes. And I believe that's an example that we can follow this Christmas, especially those of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus. May that be true of you and it be true of me this Christmas. Would you pray? Father, thank you that in the midst of the hustle and bustle that is today, with all the presents and lights that bring so much noise into our lives, thank you that we can take a few moments to quiet our hearts and to reflect on you and what this day is all about. Today is about you giving us hope in the form of a baby who came into the world to save us from our sins. Lord, I pray that we would all be willing to boldly and unconditionally say yes to you, to whatever it is you ask of us, recognizing that that is all part of the, the works that you have prepared in advance for us to do, not for our sake, but for your glory. So thank you that we can celebrate your first coming into this world. Now help us to live faithfully and obediently as we await your second coming. And all God's people said, amen. Well, God bless you, church. Merry Christmas and a happy new year.
was Christ the saving one. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord our God. Worthy, worthy, Jesus Christ the saving one. is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the Son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, that every tongue Jesus is his 